Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Leaf back again with another Planet Zoo video. This time, I have Simply Savannah's Shell Challenge. Shout out to her for including me in this. And yeah, let's just jump right into it. So this shell was provided by the lovely Zoofluencer. And if you know anything about Zoofluencer, he has a very realistic style. And you can definitely see over here, like, he went up over and beyond with the shell that he created. This is for the sable antelope, by the way. A uh, animal that I'm not really used to working with. One that I can just appreciate from the sidelines, but not really one that I would, you know go out out of my way to make an exhibit for um yeah so i at first i was kind of confused on like where to take this so as you know the shell challenge you can't really change the paths up you can only change the texture of the paths which is something that in retrospect i really should have done but i think it comes out really nice in the end um you can't change or add any more barriers you can't add any more paths either you can't change the terrain. What you have is what you work with. And seeing how there is only two rows of fence over here, I had to get really custom with this. And um, yeah, there's a lot of like pathing over here, which is something really interesting. Uh, not much to the exhibit, but Zoofluencer did provide me with a lot of stuff to work on on the outside of the exhibit. So I definitely wanted to focus on that. So we'll jump over to my finished project for this shell um, and see what I completed with this. All right, guys. So welcome to the completed exhibit. This is a lot more stylized than, uh, you know, every other build we've seen so far. But I, I honestly love it. It has its own charm in a way, and it's really, really themed. Uh, I don't think there's any other way to say it. So let's just jump right down in here. Actually, I'm going to activate some Tejid Cam. And here we are. All right. So uh, this is just a start. So let's start with off with what didn't make the cut. So originally, my idea was like, you know, this would be kind of like the entryway to like a larger African area in a zoo. Um... So I did want to include, like, some focus. Uh, I wanted to make an arch, but it didn't really come to fruition, unfortunately. But I think what I did over here really seals the deal. Um, these lampposts, by the way, from the Aquatic Pack are absolutely lifesavers. I love them to death. They're really cool. But yeah, let's focus on what is happening over here. So... I want to do something that's kind of sticks out. I want to do something that, you know, has a little bit of guest interactivity. So this would be a place where, you know, kids could come up. They could go sit in that little Jeep over there. And I did the foliage and the planting in a way that kind of looks like, you know, there's smoke and like dust blowing up behind the Jeep. It's going really fast and it's going off of this little hill over here. And if you follow the sight line down here, you start to see this beautiful pronghorn statue, which I kind of uh, repurposed into a sable antelope. I'm honestly really surprised that it's recolorable. And granted, it's not the exact thing. It doesn't look exactly like how a sable antelope would look. But I think it gets the job done. It has that nice black and white look to it. I think it looks absolutely swanky. So you come over here, you have a couple vending machines. I wanted to make this as, uh, as functional within a normal zoo as I could. So if you guys just want to download the shell right after and make a zoo off of it, be my guest. Um, but yeah, I added like a bunch of like scenery around here. And if we hop around this other way, we'll just go up here because there's not really much over here. So let's just pretend you're entering the area from over here so first uh, the, like right off the bat i knew fencing was going to be an issue as you saw from zoofluencer only giving me these little fences over here so i did a little trick using the monorail to make sort of a fake fence i think it looks great it has a nice flow through it. It gives a little bit more of a modern sheen on top of a uh, more rustic look. 
And I kind of double fenced it over here with a bunch of the Australian pieces. So it has a, it like doesn't obstruct the view anymore. Hey, blue person. Um, and you can see perfectly into the exhibit and it like kind of happens all the way around there. So let's just circle down over here and over here. I, so there was a lot of areas where I can make some guest areas. So I tried my best to sort of give the guests a lot more seating area than normally would. These picnic benches were provided by the lovely Leela Jean on the workshop. I pretty much use them in every single zoo that I make now, and I think they are perfect. Um, since I couldn't add any more paths, these are just implied, so guests can't really sit over there, but I think it adds to the overall experience just perfectly. So here's our first viewing structure. And I took a page out of Nicholas Lion Rider's workbook and included these little steps over here that have the little yellow guidelines. So usually this is something that you see in a lot of zoos um, and a lot of places in general, like theme parks and stuff. You'd have a uh, sort of visual indicators of stairs going up to a raised area. And if we just take the stairs up here. We have a lovely shaded structure. Um, I don't have these on the workshop yet. If this is something that people want on the workshop, feel free to just reach out to me and I'll throw them up there. They're just a little information signs, uh, not too detailed, but whatever. And right here, obviously the sight lines give way to uh, this beautiful mud structure over here. Um, so if we just break into the exhibit over here, these fences, I'm not really a big fan of how, let me just show you, of how the, um, whatever you call these, what are they called? I don't even know. The Gab Gabion? Gabion? I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, I'm not really too big of a fan of how those looked, so I wanted to cover them up, and this is a kind of style that I wanted to do for a while. Um, it's based off of some of the mud structures in Mali. So you might have heard of like the Great Mosque of Dejane, which is, you know, a wonder in Civ 6 or Civ 5 or both. I don't really know. Um, and I wanted to give it sort of a place in here. So we have a couple areas for guests to sit. These are the, uh, carbon, carbon panels from the Australia set. I think they look really nice as flooring. Um, and yeah, we'll just continue on over here and we can definitely see this, uh, fence work definitely like stick out over here. I kind of went a little too hard with the foliage. I know like it takes a lot to draw yourself back and like really pace yourself with the foliage, but I like, I have no patience for that. I need to go wild with it. Um... And yeah, I essentially wanted to capture like a couple aspects of Africa. And one of the things that you'll see in like all a couple like rural African villages are these kind of like fence posts. It's not really the prettiest thing, but I feel like it adds to the experience a lot more. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't have real live wire like going across a animal exhibit. At least I don't think you would. Um, but I think it fits the vibe really well. Again, Zoo Fluencer is more of the realistic person and handing in Zoo off to me, someone who always tries to sneak a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of wild creativity into their zoos. Um, you know, expect the worst, especially like live wire going through an exhibit. So he also provided this little pond and I think it came out really nice. Uh, the antelopes can in fact get to it, but um, I don't think you would have antelopes come like next to a pond like this but whatever even provide these lovely stands over here i was gonna do like sort of an african marketplace but time wasn't really on my side and i just wanted to get the shell done as soon as possible so i just essentially put one thing in each of them and honestly i think it looks really nice like you come in here you grab your drink might be a nice place to meet up with your friends and so on. And yeah, so we just continue on over here and yeah, another one right over there. And here we go. So 
you might have seen in the actual shell itself, there was a little bit of a divot going on in here. And I thought, you know what? Obviously, you're going to have like a little bit of a uh, viewing structure in there. But I sort of made it like an implied antelope. Well, not even implied anymore. Uh, feeding area. So you would come in here at like whatever the designated time is. And these... Uh, and the education platforms just came out. So I want to use them. I want to integrate them into the park. And yeah, you would have the educator come over here. You'd feed the antelopes who are just, they're chilling out right now. He's a little scratched up, but I think he's fine. Yeah, totally fine. And yeah, that's pretty much that over there. Couple more areas for sitting down over here. And I'm not good at interiors, guys, I will admit. Um... But over here, we have the indoor viewing area. So, wow, that is loud. I need to turn down the game volume. Uh, I have some music playing over there. And some, like, TVs where you can learn about the antelope and stuff. I have one more of these over here. And you can get, like, a more unique view from over here about the antelopes. And, yeah, they seem to be happy. Not really prancing about the exhibit as much as I'd hoped. But, you know, what can you do? Uh, I didn't decorate this place too much. In retrospect, I really should have, but, you know, I, I'm not that good at interiors, guys. I'm really sorry. Here I have the credits to the blueprints that I use, Leela Jean and Eben. Thank you guys so much for the help. Um, and back here is just, you know, I'm not, uh, as I've said before, I'm not, I'm not the realistic person, guys. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do a backstage for these antelopes. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, except for I wanted to go beyond expectations this time around. And I did a lot of lighting, so if we come over here, I sort of lit up these bushes to be nice and bright red, so you would have, like, I don't know, it looks nice. I don't know why they're red, but it looks nice. I lit up the temple over there. I lit up this little hut over here. Um, I lit up the water a little bit, which you can't really see too well, but I think it has a nice, sort of nice effect. Um, over here is where it starts to get nice and lit up. I have the light in here. Uh, normally you wouldn't really go into zoos at night unless if they have like some special projects or uh, experiences, but what can you do? These lights don't really do as much good lighting as I hope, but, you know, it's, it, it works. It, it's, it's, it's an experience. Um, and I thought this was kind of cool, too. I completely forgot about that. But, yeah, that's pretty much the whole exhibit. Um, I just want to give a huge shout out to uh, Simply Savannah for including me on this. Um, if you guys aren't subscribed to her already, which I, I bet most of you are, but if you aren't, Go subscribe to her right now. Um, and be sure to subscribe to Zoofluencer as well for providing the shell. Uh, Zoof, you made a wonderful shell for me. It was really fun. And guys, go subscribe to Thrive as well. I feel so badly for putting him through the pain that was the shell that I made. Um... If you guys want to take a knock at that shell, feel free to, because I made it with a pure intention of pissing someone off, and I think it worked. <laughs> um, and yeah, be sure to check out like every single other person's. Mine is probably like, you know, it's not the best one of the bunch, but it was really fun to work with. Uh, it really like this was a really fun way to kind of teach myself about like foliage work. Uh, habitat design and yeah if you guys ever need practice with that go check out everyone else's shells i'm sure they've all linked theirs um and definitely go try them out because it's really fun and well my mouse is my camera is frozen so oh there we go uh yeah i kept you guys here long enough have a great one uh i really hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video whenever the hell that is. So thank you guys so much and goodbye.